five quick tips to lift up those butt cheeks. Hi everyone, my name is Christiana Mikesh. I'm a certified personal trainer and online coach. I have helped hundreds of women of all different shapes and sizes, of ages, of weights, to find their own sustainable weight loss routine. And today, I'm gonna share with you five quick tips on how to tighten and lift up those butt cheeks. But before I start, I need your help. I'd like to ask you for a tiny favor, but only if that's okay for you. If that's not okay with you, then that's fine too. That, that's okay too. If I promise you that I will do everything in my power to give you the best five tips I have and make this video worth watching your time and you think this video was helpful to you, that you promise me to give me a tiny thumbs up, maybe subscribe to my channel, maybe share with your friends so I know that this video was worth producing that this video actually helped some of you and this would help me so much how does that sound let's start let's jump right into number one squats and hip press don't work your butt if you are quad dominant and a lot of people are quad dominant you see the glutes are the biggest and strongest muscle in the lower body but they are also the laziest of course, when you perform a squat or hip thrust, your glutes are somewhat working. In fact, your entire body is working during the movement. From your feet to your calves, you stabilize the muscles along the shins, the front of the leg, the back of the leg, your glutes, your core, your back, even your upper body is working if you hold onto a dumbbell or some kind of weight. But percentage-wise, the engagement in these individual muscles varies. So your quads, front of the leg, might be working at 80% while your glutes are only working at 20%. So whenever you do a squat or hip thrust and you feel your muscles burning, but only in front of the leg, then that's the wrong muscle group in this case, because we want to work on your butt, not on the front of your leg, right? I can nearly guarantee you that you're in this case quad dominant. Which brings me to number two. Warm up your glutes before you do your leg exercises to maximize the muscle engagement. In order to warm up your butt, you need to do what we call an isolation exercise. So you really need to do an exercise that focuses on your glutes only. So what I see a lot of people doing is that they throw up their leg, they arch their back if, if there was no tomorrow for their spine. What do you actually work there? I just heard my spine cracking. So the trick here is that you keep your upper body as stable as you can, you engage your core by pulling your belly button towards your spine and keep your arms straight. Now because of the direction your butt muscle is attached to your body, which is like kinda diagonally, you actually don't want to keep your leg completely straight back behind you, but at a slight angle. This is going to help you maximize the squeeze and really feel your butt working. Number three, add more protein into your diet. Now I understand that a lot of you, a lot of you ladies are concerned to get bulky, even though I will tell you, you won't get bulky from eating protein, but this is actually the time to bulk your butt up. You wanna actually blow it up get it strong, get it lifted, firm and tight, right? A good recommendation, even if you don't work out regularly, is to have three servings of protein per day. So basically for breakfast, lunch and dinner, okay? One serving equals to 20 grams of protein, which is at least the palm, uh, the size and the thickness of your palm. Chicken, tofu, beef, pork, fish, if you're vegetarian, find a veggie source like edamame, broccoli, mix it up that are high in protein and get at least 20 grams of protein per meal, okay? If you have three meals a day. If you say you only have two meals a day, well then you need to get 30 grams of protein per meal. And that is the minimum. 
And this is the recommendation for everyone, working out or not. So if you do work out, you actually want to have a little bit more than that. But this is the minimum required, all right, to start building it, to start actually using that protein that, you, that you're consuming. You don't need to drink any protein shakes or supplement shakes or so. It's totally enough if you eat a little bit more protein. Number four, stop sitting so much. Whenever I got my busy days and I sit a lot in front of the computer, I noticed how my butt just gets flat and tight. Tight as in it starts actually hurting to sit. Like my muscles are cramping up, it gets tight, my lower back gets tight, my hamstrings, back of the leg, gets tight. Why the hell is everything hurting? Try to stand up from time to time, stretch a little bit, stretch a little bit your lower back, um, get a little stretch in your hamstrings, back of the leg, your glutes, get yourself a standing desk, work a little bit there. And when you get home, don't put yourself from one seated position in front of the computer the whole day to another seated position in front of the TV the whole evening. It can't blow if you iron it down for hours. And number five, take your progress pictures. How the hell is that gonna help me, right? So let's say you started working out, you did your exercises, after a month you don't see anything, okay? You didn't notice anything. Even if you think you haven't made any progress yet, I can nearly guarantee you have, you just didn't notice. Because it's really hard to judge if you see, if you look at a body part every single day and try to assess it. Please take a picture on day one. If you already passed day one, you're on day 60. Take a picture on day 60 and take another picture four weeks later and compare them side by side. What changed? And I can nearly promise you, there is some kind of change. Take pictures and measurements to get a more precise feedback and consider taking it in your underwear actually. Okay, you don't need to send it to anyone, but if you take it in your tights, you won't see as much of a progress. And that's the point here, right? So as promised, those were my five best tips I had. I really hope you liked it. I hope you can um, give me your promise, give me a tiny thumbs up, maybe subscribe, maybe share it with your friends, because sharing is caring. One more thing, the most important thing about all this information is that you actually take action and put this very practical information that I normally make people pay me for, no, I actually don't. This information is only gonna help you if you actually implement it and put it into practice. So I hope you wrote it down. Let me know if it works. Let me know if you have any other tip that you found very helpful that you'd like to share with me so I can include it next time. And see you in the next video. Bye!